All right, what's up, guys? I'm sitting out here in the hotel courtyard. Got me a tarp laid out here. I'm here with my cousin. Came on my rock trip with me. I shot a video out of the hotel room. Was that last night or night before? Last night, and <clears throat> I got a lot of good feedback. It really helped a, a lot of people, I think, like make major breakthroughs, because it was, I don't know if it was just because he was asking me questions and I was answering them and explaining, but uh, some stuff really stuck with people. I had a lot of good, good comments and emails and stuff, so. Uh, he's here again, and he'll just be watching me nap, and if he's got something to ask, maybe it'll work out good again. He might be quiet, though. I whooped him pretty good today, I think. We, we put some miles on. The creeks were up when we got down here where we wanted to go, so we had to go back northeast a little bit to get a little bit lower water levels. They're still up here, but not quite as bad. Which one of these am I working on? What happened to the bullseye one? I just had it. There it is. Let's, let's do something with this one. But anyway, so the creeks were uh, not as quite as bad flooded over here. Big old thinning flake off there. Might get an arrowhead out of that for sure. Both those. You can see it glossed up a little bit with the heat treatment. I shouldn't be having to hit that thing as hard as I was there. Might take me a minute or two to warm up. So you definitely want to try to get your edge below center line, especially when you're first starting out. Like where the center line of the mass of the piece is, you want to try to get that edge below that. That'll automatically put most of the mass lower. So when you strike it, it's, you know, you have to have material in front of the edge for the flake to go. That's why areas that are concave and they're dished out like that if you hit the edge you know the edge gives way there's no material in front of it to carry that energy through there put a boo-boo in it when i smacked it so hard when i first started right there I usually line it up and kind of set my support you know if you just grab it and swing and hit it you know I guess you could do that if you got used to it or whatever but when I I'll push on the piece and kind of get it seated in my hand and get my support right and really get a hold of it yeah you want that flake to go I'm supporting it so this will go right down that ridge here all along the, the ridge yeah you don't want to start it too far back because this flake will go right there and it'll stop i guess it just kills that those the energy waves going through there or whatever it, i think it, <clears throat> it that makes that fracture think there's a whole bunch of mass right there so it just breaks off or just stops and doesn't release Road along the ridge. Oh my gosh. This thing is going to be crazy. I probably should have picked another one to start with. Some 
grinding and dulling that edge because if it's too delicate and you hit it, it'll crush and it won't hold together. It has to stay together for that fracture to go through there. And went all the way across. That'll thin her down. It's just a lead filled copper bopper billet. Still got some damage in there from before. Put my little finger glovies on. My little hot dog holders. I got a couple of pair of those. They work good, man. The thinner leather works good. The, some of them are real thick leather. You can't feel nothing. Just, just finger tabs for shooting a bow. Yeah. Now this thing here, now this is one of a kind. Although I should probably patent it and make more. It's the toe of a work boot and the top of the heel I sew together and they clip together there. It protects the palm of my hand. Somebody actually made one of these. They copied it and posted it on Facebook. It looked just like it. <laughs> So I'm trying to make big thick flakes right now and really thin it down. And this edge is kind of curled up a little bit, so I don't think that'll work if I, it might, but I need to change that a little bit. A lot of times if you're trying to change the angle or you know clear a spot off, it, it's better to hit like right behind it so that fracture when it curves like that it'll clear that area and it'll leave a nice uh, flat platform you know striking surface for your next flake This is uh, Buffalo River Chert, by the way, from Tennessee. My new favorite place in the world. I drove up a road today, up a holler. I said, man, I said, I'm moving to this spot right here. <laughs> And there's some beautiful country up here. Creeks and caves and rock shelters and plowed fields and wild turkey and deer and and wolves. We seen a wolf. Um, I guess it was a red wolf. That's what they the only kind of wolf they have here in Tennessee. I guess they're considered maybe like a timber wolf. I don't know. We seen a wolf. That's all I know. It was standing out on a hill right near Wolf Creek and Wolf something Baptist Church a couple things named Wolf Air I said man that's pretty ironic unless they've been seeing them around here for a while 
there, maybe there's a sanctuary or something one might have got out but it was no doubt 100 percent a big wolf standing right out on the hillside looked like he was after dinner being sneaky he wasn't really right out in the open he was kind of up next to that tree line yeah probably after a rabbit or something my cousin said uh do you see that <laughs> is that a wolf because yeah, he hesitated and i looked over and i was like uh yeah that's definitely a wolf no doubt about it 100 percent big long legs Wasn't no, uh, it was, yeah, it's full grown. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess the snakes are popping out. Coming out of hibernation. I've seen a frog, so that's not a good sign. Crawled ads, salamanders, the amphibians are coming out. I seen a picture, somebody posted a picture of a big old water moccasin yesterday. All right, so this thing is probably thinned out by half, close to it. What I started with. Still got some nice steep angles and a lot of mass right on the edge here, so I can send some nice big thick flakes across back this way. The only problem with these finger tabs is flakes go down in them. I gotta be careful here. If you hit too high on the edge, sometimes it'll put a radial fracture in there. I don't think it did there, but what happens is that material it stresses it so much, and it it can't it's, it doesn't have that ability to release this way, so it stresses that material and it actually causes a fracture to open up this way. It just a lot of times it'll just go in about an eighth inch. So you got to thin one side out by thinning the other side out. What do you mean? Like, uh, where the highest point is on that you're wanting to thin out. How do you get to that point to thin that out? Where do you start? Well, you just want to... I always say you want to work into the work into the area. You don't want to attack it head on because a lot of times your flakes will fail and they'll break and stuff. But if, if you've got an area of, of raised mass that you're wanting to get rid of, um, you just want to make sure your edge is, is facing the right direction and it's it looks good to, to hit it'll support a flake and then you know try to take a flake and then another flake and you, if you work your way into the, to an area of how do you pick the point on the edge to hit well i really just kind of swing it whatever looks good and what do you uh, think that looks good? exactly <laughs> that takes time it just takes time but i mean just like well, what you want basically is, like I said, the edge, we want it below center line. And what you can do is you can set up what's, what's called a continuous platform, which just means you turn your edge to one side or the other, the whole edge. And then you can take flakes right from that, from that one surface. Or you can make an isolated platform. Say, see where this ridge comes out? That'd be a good place you know, those flakes love ridges, so other than this being a little bit flat in here, you can probably get a flake right there, and it's got decent mass all the way out to the edge. If you look at it, it's below the center of mass. It's kind of pointy and kind of sharp, so if I hit that thing right now, it's probably just going to blow up, just crush into a hundred pieces, but if I grind it, and then you can even isolate a little more. It still failed. 
I think there might have been some damage in that edge. But anyways, those are called isolated platforms. And you can set something up like that. Just keep falling one down that way to set it out. You can progressively just work your way, yeah, right on down. Um, people do it different. Some people just do it completely random, which is pretty much how I do it. And other people are really strategic about, you know, every every strike. And they set up every platform and really take their time with it. For me, I like to do it opportunistically, especially starting out, because, you know, how, how else are you going to find out what works and what don't, you know? But I can, I wish somebody would have just told me in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would have saved a lot of money on rock. But when you nap opportunistically like that, you're kind of just gambling on every every shot. You know, does it look good enough to, to work or is it not, you know? So it's just getting the eye. Yeah. And, you know, it's basically just making sure that edge is going gonna, is gonna to support. It's not going to shatter like it just did. And it'll, it'll carry a flake through there. Um, if you isolate a platform, yeah, you can that's, target yeah, anything. I guess that's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. How do you isolate a platform? Okay, so, like, if you turn the whole edge, that's a continuous platform, right? Right. But... And you're thinning out what's in the, on the bottom. Mm-hmm. You're working off the bottom of the piece. And, uh... What I look for is to make sure there's enough mass in front of the edge, you know, to get the flake. So, like, with, you'll start, these contours will start jumping out at you immediately. Like, you'll just, it'll be second nature. You'll know what's good and what what's not. But, you you know, you want convexity like this because flakes like to, to travel over that con convex surface. Um, when you flake into a real flat area, a lot of times they'll step and break off because they get so thin structurally, structurally they can't hold together and they, they just break or they run out of energy and, and snap off. But, um, you know, a flake will spread out. It'll be a perfect circle. If you take a flake on a flat surface, every flake will be a perfect circle. You know, so when you flake on a ridge or something, you can get thinner and more narrow flakes. But, uh, I don't know if any of that answered your question or not, but. <laughs> isolated platform is basically, you, you want your edge to be below center, and then it's, it's as simple as isolating an area. So you take a flake on each side of where you want to take your main so flake. You're going off your center point. Yeah. So you already have that in your head. Yeah. So I'm looking at right here. So that, that'd be a good spot to hit. It's ground good. It's got a good angle on it. And there's enough mass in front of it. Um, it it'll really work good if I just prepare it a little more. I took this one to isolate it. I'll come over here and take a couple little ones on this side of it. And now, I mean, that thing is ready to rock. All I got to do is smack it right there and direct that energy in that way and that fracture will initiate and carry all the way through there. If I don't choke. And then, you know, and, and then it, and then it ends up being, you know, a, a nice flat surface. But if you isolate your mass on each side of where you want to take that flake, it'll really help. Um, it's less of a gamble, you know, a lot more predictable. And almost any preparation you do to the edge is beneficial. So if you don't hit that edge with the center pretty much every time when you get down to that point, you're, 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 you might have a failure. Yeah. <laughs> 
you'll notice if you're yeah if your edge is you know if it's failing a lot and you're just crushing the edge you either need to braid more or swing slower slow your swing speed down um your support will, will be another thing you'll have to get used to uh, how tight you hold on to it because if you're just basically you know you're just holding this thing like this and trying to hit it and it's bouncing around and stuff nothing's it's like putting this thing in a bench vice when you're holding it tight. So you hold it as tight as you can, that's why you got to... You don't have to hold it as tight as you can, but you'll use different different force, uh, different you're amounts of pressure. You're trying to get it where it won't move. You're trying to get it where it won't move, but sometimes you want it to move a little bit. So sometimes you'll kind of let the edge fall away a little bit when you hit it, when you're wanting a real short flake, or just to turn the edge a little bit. You know, you'll hit it and let it let it bounce a little bit. But when you're trying to get a good flake, you really need to support it. And you need to pull it in a straight line once it starts getting thin to keep it from cracking in the middle. Um, and you want to support the leading edge with your fingers out here. And then I almost always use surface support. It just helps the flakes go farther. Um, I just kind of got used to doing that. A lot of guys don't use surface support at all. They just, you know, they, they keep it completely open under there and let the flakes come off in midair. But I got That's this. That's why you have to turn it over and knock the flakes off. Yeah. sound real good sorry about the noise guys we're right next to highway 40 i'd like to save as much of that bullseye there as i can Maybe I can start, uh, I'm gonna start teaching my cousin there. He just went back up to the room, but I'm gonna start teaching him how to flint map. And uh, maybe I can start filming some of our little set downs. If he's gonna be traveling around getting rock with me, he'll get to watch plenty of flint napping. He's getting real good at finding the rock and, and uh, you know, spawning it and testing it. I knew he would. Got an eye for that kind of stuff. getting warmed up here a little bit. <laughs> 